Hey y'all, hope you're doing well. Uh, I just wanted to come on here and talk for a minute about this snare drum. It's a 1960 Rogers Holiday snare drum. It's dirty and it's grimy and it has the incorrect strainer on it, which I'm going to remedy uh, by putting a period correct one that I have on here when I clean it up. Uh, it's not significantly different than any holiday that I've seen or owned and I own a bunch of them uh, ranging from 1957 to 1961 and it's <clears throat> very much like those in that it has a three ply jasper shell uh, tall hoops the earlier 4947 bread and butter lugs which are the larger lugs as opposed to the smaller 3917 with the 1 and 5 eighths hole spacing um, it has the second script badge also known as uh, the large script badge uh, a badge that ran for one year post pirate badge and before the common script badge what is unique about this drum is the placement of that badge if you notice that it's over the vent hole extremely uncommon for Roger snare drums now I've seen toms of the late 50s and early 60s uh, with the badge over the vent hole. Not many of them, but they're, but they're out there. But I had never seen a snare drum. Um, the only place I have seen it uh, was a long time ago on a Jim Chapin album cover. It's actually that album cover right there that's hanging on the wall. This album right here. It was the only place I had seen one. And I've been looking for one ever since I saw it on that album cover. And uh, I've asked around to... You know, people I consider Rogers experts, and some of them I consider mentors, uh, and most of them have never seen one either. And one one uh, one gentleman said he had seen one in his travels at some point. He didn't recall what finish it was, <clears throat> but I'd never seen one. I've never even seen a picture of one um, outside of the Jim Chapin album cover. Um, so if anybody out there has one with that badge holiday snare drum of this vintage with that badge over the vent hole please send me a picture if you're watching this on facebook post a picture if you're watching it on youtube uh please contact me and we'll figure out a way for you to get me a picture of it um because i've been searching one for, for one for a long time and uh <clears throat> until i found this one uh, i recently had a phone call with a gentleman who lives down in florida now he wished for his Identity to be concealed, so I'm going to respect that. But this this gentleman was a longtime student of Jim Chapin, and became a lifelong friend. And um, he told me that those snare drums on that album cover are indeed Jim's personal drums. And he said that he doesn't have any proof of this, but he believes that Jim would order his drums from Rogers when he was an endorser, with the badges over the vent hole that way. Um, he said he also doesn't have any way to prove this, but he said knowing Jim, he wanted his drum that way just so that it was slightly set apart from uh, the quote-unquote off-the-rack drums. Um, I guess sort of like a, almost like a signature model. But he said that Jim did indeed order his drums that way. Um, he also told me that at some point in the 90s, Jim had fallen on some hard times and ended up selling almost all of his drum gear, including all the Rogers drums that he had accumulated over the years, being an endorser. And um, you know, I felt that was that was interesting to me because I, I didn't I had I didn't know that about Jim. Um, but my point of this video is that I have a slim suspicion that this is the Silver Sparkle drum on that album cover. Uh, I have no proof or provenance of that whatsoever it's just a suspicion and I and I and I do believe it and um, actually a friend of mine who is a a well-known Rogers collector also agrees with me he believes it's the drum as well um, what would that mean to anyone I don't know not a whole lot if anything at all <laughs> it's not gonna you know increase the value of the drum or at all and there's probably a lot of people watching this video right now who don't even know who Jim Chapin is, but it means quite a bit to me, hence the reason why I own this drum right now. 
and I could be completely wrong. It wouldn't be the first time, and it's not going to be the last time that I'm completely wrong, but it's fun to think about. And, um, you know, and plus, you know, I'm just searching for this drum for so long, it, uh, it's nice to, to, to finally have one in my possession. Um, the only way to really know for sure if it's Jim's drum is if somebody had the serial number of Jim's Silver Sparkle Holiday uh, with the badge over the vent hole, which is slim to none chances. But the Internet's a crazy place, and who knows, really. So if anybody out there has that number, hit me up. I'm going to clean this thing up. I'm going to rip all the hardware off and shine it up. I'm going to put the proper strainer on it, like I said before. I'm going to try to bring the bring the wrap back to life. Wish me luck on these lugs because uh, most of the time when you're taking off these lugs, the tabs like to rip off or they like to strip out. So I'm expecting some of that, but I might get lucky, but I don't think so. I hear something, something rattling in there as we speak. I'm assuming that's a tab, so... Uh, so let's take this thing apart and try to clean it up and, and see what happens. So I pulled all the lugs off and as you can see on the fade, it was indeed a silver sparkle. There was some question if it was faded gold or if it was originally silver and it is indeed originally silver. I got lucky with the lugs. Ends up only one of them had the dreaded broken tab. So I did get lucky. Um, I might have one actually. And if I don't, uh, I may know someone who does. It does have this masking tape on it. That's pretty dried up that I'm gonna have to work on getting off before I clean it. Um, but you can see that beautiful and vibrant silver that used to be under, that used to be there, that now hides under the lugs. So I hit the shell with some Meguiar's and then some Carnuba wax. The, the toughest part of the whole thing was getting that masking tape off. That was a real pain. And I did notice that um, in one of the spots, that had the tape on it. I hit it with just lightly with some sandpaper. And I noticed that this darker discoloration started to come off. And I probably could wet sand the whole thing and get it back to a really close um, silver to what's under the lugs, but I'm not gonna do all that. I kinda like the character of of the shell the way it is, and it's it looks nice and it's gonna look nice. So the lugs, the rods, the screws, and the back plate got a dawn bath. I'm gonna polish those up. I did end up having a spare lug. I found a bag of seven of them that I'd forgotten I had. So I was able to re replace the one with the broken tab. This is the strainer that's gonna go on it, the period correct one to replace the incorrect one. So those will get polished up and I have the hoops out here soaking in metal rescue so I'll pull those out either later or tomorrow this is the stuff I use right here they were in a little bit worse shape than the rest of the hardware so I'm gonna give those a soak whether this is the drum from the Jim Chapin album cover or not is far less important than the fact that another drum is saved from the depths of a damp garage and brought back to life it's a tale of rescue for me. Like my friend Gary Spaulding always says, saving the world one drum at a time. And I do love saving these old drums. Do you have a Roger snare drum of this era with the badge over the grommet? If so, I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.